Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you. Welcome to Syrups 101, where we take two minutes out of our day. Actually, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. But where we take some time out of our day to talk about everything simple syrup related in terms of cocktails. Yay! All of us like a good old fashioned sweet cocktail. Actually, brief aside, the old fashioned, the OG cocktail, has simple syrup in it. That's where cocktails came from. It was a mix of alcohol, syrup, and usually a bitter. So, syrups are crucial, and let's take a few minutes to talk about them. So I've had some questions come in about syrups and how to make certain kinds, what I'm talking about when I'm saying it's not thick enough, you know, girth importance. Why don't we get into it and we'll explain as we go. I thought it might be fun for you to see what pre-made syrups can be used instead. I have some flavored syrups, ginger, vanilla chamomile, just maple syrup, raw agave syrup, and these are all things that if you have in your house, great. You can just use syrup. Whenever I say simple syrup, if you have this, it'll work. That being said, it is so easy to make simple syrup, so why don't we? All right, so simple syrup. Um, it is simple and it is syrup, and this is the best batch I've ever made. It's nice and viscous. That's the opposite of runny, it's thick. So it is equal parts of sugar, and this is the beautiful thing about simple syrup, you don't even need a measuring cup because whatever cup you fill with sugar and pour into your pot, do the exact same amount of water. It is that easy. Add heat, and ta-da, you've made simple syrup. In case you are not kitchen gifted, culinarily gifted, culinarily gifted. In case you do not know what the fuck you're doing in the kitchen, welcome. You are going to put the water in, put the sugar in, and add a medium amount of heat until it bubbles, boils. Um, you have to stir it to make sure that the sugar dissolves, and then you're going to turn the heat down and let it simmer, little bubbles, uh, until it has become thick. And you may remember from some of my videos, I'm not very patient at waiting for it to become thick. But the longer that you cook it, reduce it, the more water will evaporate out of it, and the thicker your syrup will get and the more syrupy consistency it will have. Uh, if it's thin, that's fine, it will still work, but a nice thick syrup is going to have a better, I don't even know, like it's just better, it's just, it's just better. Nobody gives you like watery syrup and goes like, here, put this on your pancakes. No, you want like you want it to be nice and thick. A key component of thickening is cooling. So after you poured it into your jar, you're gonna put it in your Frankie. Ta-da! So in other videos that you may have watched with me or someone else, they might have talked about flavored syrups. So peppercorn syrups, rosemary syrups, whatever the fuck you want syrups. It's just an infused syrup. You can use vanilla, you can use cinnamon, you can use whatever you have in your house um, to throw it in during the cooking process to give that flavor to your syrup. I'm a big fan of herb syrups, rosemary, lime. I have used them in a few different cocktails. Today we're gonna make rosemary syrup together and show you how that's done. Also, big fan of fruit syrups. Fruit syrups are a little different, but I will show you all of that baby stuff. Baby steps. We did the simple syrup. That was the beginner. Actually, I guess technically this is the beginner. Uh, simple syrup is like beginner intermediate. We're gonna do the infused here and let's get started. For herbs, do not use dried herbs. They will not work as well. Fresh herbs have a lot more of the oils. That's what you're gonna get the flavor from in the syrup. So once you've got your sugar and water bubbling like this, this is when you're gonna add your herbs into it. So you want to get whatever herb you're using. I'm using rosemary. So you just wanna cover it and you wanna let it simmer and reduce. You want to lightly push on it to release the oils. All right, so you can start to see that it's getting thick as it moves. It's a good indication that you can start to take the heat off and just watch it. The burner's still warm, so it'll keep cooking. If you have gas, put it on really, really low. So if you have any questions, just leave them below. I'll be sure to answer for you. And let's get started with how to 
pour and store your syrups. So rosemary syrup is ready to go. Um, I only have this big ass jar. So you can just pour it right out and you can see it's got a really nice consistency, very syrupy. As it cools off, it will become more and uh, more, more thick. Yeah, it'll become thicker. You can tell that it's hit it because when their bubbles are being made, it doesn't, they don't go away right away. And you can see it like sticking to the sides. Don't leave the rosemary in it. That will cause it to go bad faster because it is organic matter. Um, this should stay good in the fridge for a couple of weeks and it just, it smells like heaven, so enjoy. So just a couple of quick things to say. Uh, for fruit, you can absolutely use frozen fruit. Frozen fruit works really well because it has a lot of moisture in it. If you don't use frozen fruit, just keep an eye on it. Sometimes you'll have to add water to make sure that the consistency is right. It's, it's, a, it's a ballpark and it's as you like it. So with fruit syrups, obviously you're gonna have chunks of fruit in it um, because as much as you mash it during the cooking process, not all of the pulp of the fruit will break down. So berries, fruits, whatever you're using, you're gonna take the whole syrup and you are going to pour it through a strainer. So the longer that you cook this, like I did, the more it will turn into jam, which is what this is right up here. Um, and that's fine too, it's just you won't get as much syrup out of it. Ah, here's the good stuff. This is what you want for your cocktails. This is good, this is better. This is the concentrated sweet syrup. This you can use later on to put on your pancakes, just eat with a spoon, whatever floats your boat. But it's gonna take a minute or two to drip. So, stand by, I'll see you in a second. Embarrassing. Did you want some? Okay, so if you're more patient than I am, you could probably have gotten a little bit more out of it, but that is enough to make quite a few cocktails. Uh, you don't need a lot when syrups are used, just like a quarter of an ounce, an eighth of an ounce. It'll just give it a nice bit of uh, taste. I will put up to a half ounce in some cocktails depending on what the taste profile is going to be, but look at the recipe you're working with. That is how you make syrups. This guy will store in the fridge for not very long because it is fruit. It's, you know, a week at most. Keep an eye on it. If it looks like it's gone off, it probably has. Thank you for joining me today. It was so sweet of you to drop by. Huh? See what I did there? Start pun? Sweet? Okay, whatever. Um, thank you for coming. It was lovely. I would love to know what other things you would like to learn about. What, what aspects of cocktails you want to talk about. Do we want to talk about bitters? Do we want to talk about garnishes? Do we want to talk about quality of spirits? Leave a comment right below here. I am happy to answer, but also I am happy to get ideas. So, also on that note, subscribe. Join me on this journey of making our day drinking selves our best selves. And I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for stopping by.